Good morning. Welcome to St. Luke's on this fourth Sunday in Advent. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen? Amen. Amen. As is our custom, we will begin our service with the lighting of the Advent candle. <laughs> Why do we light the Advent candles? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me cannot walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What is the meaning of the fourth lighted candle? The fourth lighted candle represents the angels who announce the good news of light to a darkened world. The angels were created by God to fill his heavenly court with the praise of his name. They devote themselves to serving God in heaven by delighting to do his will. God also uses them as messengers of his good news to men and women on earth. Luke writes, And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosting praise, praising God, and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. has not overcome it. And the word, word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given our only begot, your only begotten Son to take our nature upon him and to be born of a pure virgin. Grant that we who have been born again and made your children by adoption and grace may daily be renewed by your Holy Spirit. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, to whom with you and the same Spirit be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our service continues on page 319 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 319. As you are able, please stand. In the middle of the page, bless the Lord who forgiveth all our sins. His, His mercy and Turning to page 317, as you are able, please kneel. God spake these words and said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods but me. Lord, have mercy upon us. And our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take to thyself any graven image, nor the likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or in the earth beneath, or in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor worship them. Lord, have mercy upon us, and in our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Lord, have mercy on us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Lord, Lord have mercy on us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Honor thy father and thy mother. Lord, have mercy on us, and incline our hearts to keep this law. Thou shalt do no murder. Lord, have 
Thou shalt not commit adultery. Lord, have mercy on us, and in our hearts to keep this love. Thou shalt not steal. Lord, have mercy on us, and in our hearts to keep this love. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Lord, have mercy on us, and in our hearts to keep this love. Thou shalt not covet. Lord, have mercy on us. And write all these thy laws in our hearts, which we beseech you. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. The Apostle John wrote, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The writer of Hebrews adds, Seeing that we have a great high priest that has passed into the heavens, Jesus the Son of God, let us come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Let us spend a moment or two in personal confession and reflection before we continue with our public corporate confession. At the bottom of page 320, together, Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done. And we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O oh Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind. In Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O oh most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Page 324. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one. Have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. We beseech thee, Almighty God, to purify our consciences by thy daily visitation, that when your that with thy Son, our Lord, cometh, he may find in us a mansion prepared for himself. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be attentive to the reading of God's Word. Uh, 
Our first lesson comes from the second book of Samuel, chapter 7, verses 1 through 11 and 16. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. A reading from 2 Samuel. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent, in a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my people, Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep to be prince over my people, Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies, from before you, and I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may live in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And evil doers shall afflict them no more, as formerly from the time, from the time that I appointed judge over my people. Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and 19 through 26. The psalm is found on page 713 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us read Psalm 89, verses 1 through 4, and 19 through 26, responsibly Bible verse. I will begin. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your life forever and preserve your throne for all generations. Continuing in verse 19. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. I have found David my servant. With, with my holy oil have I anointed My hand will hold him fast, and my arm will make him strong. No, no enemy shall seize him, him, nor any wicked, wicked man bring him down. down. I will crush his foes before him, and strike down those who hate him. My, my faithfulness and love shall be with him, him and he, he shall be victorious in my name. I shall make his dominion extend from the great sea to the river. He, he will say to me, you are my God, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Our second lesson comes from Paul's first letter to the church in Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. The reading can be found in our online bulletin or your personal Bibles. 
A reading from Romans. Now to God who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. As you are able, please stand. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a woman whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing is impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Christ. Please pray with him for me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable to you, our Savior and Redeemer. And may your angels come and visit each one of us, that we might know to be highly favored. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please get comfortable, and if you're a young one, gather around the screen. And for those here, in the congregation, it's time for the annual, the weekly trek of the wise men as they get one step closer. So uh, while the folks in the, in, the, in the sanctuary today gather our caravan of, of wise persons and all of their entourage, I want to talk to the other ones about something fairly important. Two things, actually. Um, first of all, on Monday, I want everybody to stay up late, if your bedtime is sunset, stay up late, go outside about an hour after the sun goes down, wherever you are, and look to the southwest. Because at that time, about an hour after sunset, you should see something that hasn't been seen since the year 1226. 
And it is a phenomena that they're calling this year the Bethlehem Star. And what that is, is the planet Jupiter and Venus or Jupiter and Saturn, or two of the big planets are going to get together so close, about an hour after sunset, that they're going to be appear to be one event in the sky that's supposed to be so bright and so beautiful, and it only happens like every 800 years. And it makes sense that in the year 2020, when nothing else has gone right, that these two planets come together and light up the sky for us. It is if God is sending us all a message. And that message is, he's still in control. Okay? So just when we think everything is out of control, he planned this before we were all born, that he's going to bring these two planets together and give us something to look forward to in the sky. And when we do that, we can say, yes, I believe. The other thing I wanted to tell you is, I believe in something that's going to cause much consternation among a lot of people out there, because I'm here to tell you, I believe in Santa Claus. Yes, I do. And I can tell you I believe in Santa Claus without my fingers being crossed and without a special wink or without my legs being crossed. I can tell you I believe in Santa Claus because what I believe about Santa Claus is that the idea that we can do good in secret for people and show the love of Christ, particularly at this time, of year is a very powerful and very potent and a very important message that we need to show the world. Right? Santa Claus, their tradition, actually started with a real person a long time ago, a Turkish bishop who took it out of his own pocket to give secret gifts to people, particularly young girls, who did not have the dowry so that she could get married, so they could get married. So he went around and he gave coins to young girls throughout his region so that they could have a really good life. And then it spread from there to not only giving gifts to young girls, but giving gifts to all children so that they would know and feel special at this time of year. That's how the tradition started. And I believe that it has changed and gotten corrupted and gotten commercialized with all the stuff that we see about Santa Claus today. But at its heart, at its heart is a person who embodies the love of Christ. And I believe that we can all embody that love of Christ. We need to do it every day. We need to do it all year round, but particularly this time of year, particularly this year, that we need to be our own little Santa Clauses, showing the world how much they are loved. And when we are asked why we do this, we can say that we believe and accept the greatest gift that was given to us, and that would be the gift of our Savior Jesus, whose birth we celebrate at this time of year. So yes, I believe in Santa Claus. No winking, no hesitations, straight up fact. And I would hope that you would believe in that supporting gift of love that the real Santa Claus, the real St. Nicholas, the real uh, Kris Kringle, the real Father Christmas shows all year, particularly this year. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that as you have gifted us with the most amazing gift, we can in turn show that gift of love to everyone we meet all day, every day, particularly today. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Did the caravan get moved? Yes. Yay. Our lesson today is a story that is known far and wide, and it is a message which is especially important to us today.
but it is a difficult message for those who have a hard time believing in Jesus at all. It is the message of the virgin birth. Now, for those people who are really scientifically in mind, this is one of those messages, this is one of those stories that they say can't possibly happen. There can't be no Jesus. If there was a Jesus, his real birth narrative was lost, was being suppressed, because there is no way that this could have happened the way it is recorded in the Gospels. First of all, most adults are going to go, we know how babies are created. So, so what are you telling me? That God from on high, this mythical individual came down and had relations with this underage girl and produced a baby and now he's justifying it by saying he's holy. We can spin this story in light of our corrupted current worldview to completely eliminate the divine, to completely eliminate the holy, to completely eliminate the very specialness of what has taken place. They want to equate what happened to Mary with what the Roman gods and the Greek gods so often did, i.e. Hercules, but the problem is, is Hercules wasn't real. Jesus was real. Jesus still is real. And it had to be taken place in this form for what Jesus was to do in the rest of his life. All of us since Jesus, all of us before Jesus, with the exception of Adam and Eve, have a singular problem that unites us all together. We were all begotten in the same way. And ever since Adam and Eve, that begottenness has implanted in us a problem, a broken piece of DNA. It was called, and is called, original sin. And because this original sin has been multiplied and complicated and expressed through all of us from Adam and Eve on down, there is no way we could do what is required of us before God so that we can be back in God's presence. We're broken people. We would like to confess our sins, and we would like to repent of our sins, and we'd like our sins to completely be taken care of. The only problem with it is, as soon as we get on our knees and we confess with all earnestness all of the things that we have done that have offended against God, and we say we're going to repent, then we're going to turn away before we get three steps. We turn around and we start running right back to our sins. <laughs> Then we pick them up and we do them all over again. Somebody better give me an amen. amen. We all do this. We don't have it within us to stop doing those things which we know we shouldn't be doing. So we can't atone for our sins. We cannot get right for any of our own actions. We can't make a sacrifice for our sins because we are all broken. Moses tried to do that. He tried to repent for the sins of his people in the Exodus. God said, no, you cannot do it because you are just as broken as everybody else. For someone to be able to come before the presence of God and to be able to atone for, to be able to take ownership of, to be able to erase, to be able to sacrifice themselves for the sin, they can't have that original sin in them. Can't be done. Because all of us are going to be bringing our own sin into the presence of a holy God, and God cannot be in the presence of sin. Something had to take place. So God in his infinite 
wisdom. She chose a woman, a young girl, whose life had indicated that she had always followed God, that she had always believed in God. She had done her best to become one who was favored by God. History tells us that in the ancient Jewish culture, that the betrothal process took about a year. The first part of the betrothal process uh, was the announcement that there was going to be a wedding. There was a financial contract that took place. They hung out together without knowing each other for about a year. And then their marriage was consummated and they were officially married. Now, in this year period between the time that the, that the groom went to the family and said, you know, this would be a good thing for both of us, and the family said yes, and the daughter went, okay. Uh, they didn't know each other. At the beginning of this process, the Holy Spirit came and talked to Mary and said, highly favored. Mary's response is, say what? <laughs> you are highly favored. God has chosen you to be a very special person in the history of the world. And Mary's response was, I'm perplexed. I'm confused. I don't understand what's going on. Any of you ever had something told to you and you didn't know what was going on, had some instructions read to you about something you were supposed to do, and you kind of looked at it and go, what are you talking about, Lewis? <laughs> right? Somebody come up and giving you some information. And you didn't quite get it. That, that's what going on with Mary. Uh, she wasn't necessarily afraid. She wasn't necessarily terrified. She just didn't understand what was going on. So the angel continues. Don't be afraid, for you found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son. And you're going to name him Jesus. He's going to be great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord of God will give him, the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom will be no end. Now, this is all talking about Jesus. Angel gives her all this information. And her next question lets her know she has her priorities right. She isn't so much worried about what's going to happen with her son. Her immediate question is, what's happening to me now? How can this be? For I am a virgin. I'm not going to worry about all of this other stuff because I'm sure that was more than her brain could comprehend. He's going to be great, and he's going to be the son of the Most High, and the Lord God's going to give him the throne of our ancestor David, he's going to rule over the house of Jacob, and he's going to be king? Wait a minute, whoa, 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 back up just a little bit. How is this going to take place? Because I'm a virgin. I haven't known a man. And in this culture, this young lady could have been as young as 12 years old. So she really didn't have an idea as how the rest of it was going to take place because she was still getting past the fact she was going to get pregnant. And then the angel explains to her, the Holy Spirit is going to do this. The same Holy Spirit that creates the spark of life in every woman when she becomes pregnant. That same Holy Spirit that brings together the biological pieces of male and female is going to do that. 
and to prove this is possible, check out your Aunt Elizabeth. Right? Y'all remember Elizabeth and Zachariah? Okay. She who was in her old age, well past childbearing, he's old and she is well past fathering. They're also going to have a kid. She's now six months pregnant. I said, what? She's not supposed to have any children. God wasn't looking upon her. She could not have even been favored in this way. You know, if you're favored back in the day, particularly if you were a woman, there were a couple of things that needed to take place. One, most women who were favored by God were of a particular age. Right? They had to be old enough to have lived some years and made some right decisions so that their wisdom would be respected among their peers. There were no young favored women. Two, you were favored back in the day if you were a woman, if you had lots of babies. Lots and lots of babies. Because that's how God showed how much you were loved. Because your womb was open and you were fruitful and you multiplied. And the more babies you had, the more favored you were. So in Jewish terms, there was nothing favored about Mary. That's why this is God's favoritism. God showing her that she was highly favored. And then the angel tells her something which is something we need to remember today. For nothing is impossible with God. If there is ever an important sentence in Scripture, if you've got your Bible, you need to highlight that verse. For nothing is impossible with God. If we were to remember that, when we're coming to God with our problems, when we're coming to God with our issues, when we're coming to God with our overwhelming burdens, when we see that weight upon our shoulders, when we see that obstacle in our way, when we see that mountain we have to climb, when we see that river we have to cross, when we see that valley that we have to get through, when we see that storm that we're right now, we need to remember that nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible with God. Our response in the midst of that, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Are we willing to be as obedient, as available as Mary was? When God taps us on the shoulder, says, you know, the person ahead of you in line could use your smile today. Some of you go, well, that's easy. They can't see me smile. Oh, no. Yes, they can. When, when the Holy Spirit taps you on the shoulder and says, you know what? Your co-worker over there needs to hear some good news today. You know what? I don't know that person. We have never talked, and every time they've talked to me, they have been short, and they've been cross, and they don't want to hear anything I have to say. When we get tapped on the shoulder, and we say, look at the person in line ahead of you, struggling to pay their groceries, and you just got a bonus. When God taps you on the shoulder, says, what must I do to get you to believe in me? But brothers and sisters, we are all highly favored who have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Because he has called us not because of anything that we have done, but what he can do through us.
We don't know what it is. We can't get our heads wrapped around it. Any more than Mary can get her head wrapped around what Jesus was going to do. Throughout Scripture, we read that Mary was perplexed and she pondered and she wondered all through her life about the greatness of her son. But at the beginning, it starts off with, here I am, the servants of the Lord. But brothers and sisters, today we need to raise our hands because God is calling and saying, highly favored one. We may not feel it, and that's okay because our feelings can come and go. The reality is God has a call and a purpose for each one of our lives. We may not be given birth to the Savior of the world, but we can absolutely share the good news of his birth, his life, his death and resurrection. And in doing so, we can pass on what we have received. We can be the bearer of the gift to a world that needs it this Christmas time. We can stand up and say, I believe in Santa Claus. And say it without a wink wink, say it without a nudge nudge. Because that gift is peace. That gift is love. That gift is caring for those who need it. We can stand against the oppression of the world view and stand up and say, there is Christ in my Christmas. And we can do it all year round. So is anybody out there with me today going to stand up and get excited? Going to be a bearer of Christ to the world? I pray that you will consider allowing yourself to do so. And I pray that we will do this in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. page 329 in the Book of Common Prayer. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, when thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, Michael Hunn and Jerry Lamb, our bishops, and Daniel the priest, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their lives. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Michelle and Greg, our governor. 
that they all may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the whole world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that, rejoicing in my whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Dennis, Lola, Sarah, Kit, Aidan, Holland, Mark, Vicki, Garrett, Robert, Francia, Chris, Vanessa, Milton, Brian, Gina, Florence, Brandy, Carl, Bertha, Carlos, Kira, Marshall Ed, Jack, Shirley, Loretta, Carter, Jane, Carol, Natalie, and Michelle, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. In the church's weekly cycle of prayer, I bid your prayers for Grace House Carlsbad, Melissa Roberts, Director, Assurance Home, Roswell. In the St. Luke's family, we pray for Lori and Tim Shaw, Michael and Rochelle Schmidt, Jane Schwanke, Christina Scott. We pray for those in the military, law enforcement, first responders, firefighters, all nurses, physicians, healthcare professionals, and workers. We pray for all those who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic throughout the world. We pray for the healing of those affected by violence of any and all types. O oh God, you have bound us together in a common life. Help us in the midst of our struggles for justice and truth, to confront one another without hatred or bitterness, to work together with mutual forbearance and respect. Please add your own petitions and thanksgivings at this time, either silently or loud. We also bless your holy name for all those servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of St. Luke and all of your saints, and with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share that peace with those closest to you. Okay, please get comfortable. Um, one thing that you all need to know and need to remember is that sometime in the middle of this week, our beloved parish administrator is going to be going on a well-deserved and all-too-short vacation. 
To that end, Lorenzo is going to be sending out the next several weeks' bulletins in advance with the readings in advance in your emails. So you need to be checking each week your email to make sure that you have the right readings so that you can be uh, on the same page as all of us. If you don't get them, if you haven't been getting the emails, you need to get in touch with Lorenzo like yesterday so that we can get you added to the list. We've been sending them out as a bulk. And sometimes the email services see such bulk emails and immediately drop them into your spam folder. So if all of a sudden one week you don't get it, take a look in your spam folder because I'm fairly certain Lorenzo doesn't go through and mysteriously click on somebody to go, yes, this week they're not going to get the readings. <laughs> if you got them the week before and the week before that, chances are you're getting them this week. So everybody check your emails for the next couple of weeks readings. We still have the cons, both plain and candy, that are both for sale. The batches of the candied are small, so they're all quality control. I know because I taste each one out of each batch. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yes, I'm working on my COVID-15 right about now. Mm -hmm. uh, we are accepting food donations for our own in-house uh, food pantry. Uh, we're, giving them a, giving, we're getting it in and we're giving it out. So uh, please bring. Uh, we're accepting stuff from the barn, but the barn's not going to be open until after the first of the year, but if you need to drop something off, get in touch with me because Lorenzo's gonna be gone for way too long. <laughs> um, our next two Thursday men's breakfasts have been canceled because the first Thursday is Christmas Eve and the next Thursday after that is New Year's Eve. So it's going to be sometime after the first of the year when we will be meeting again and it will probably be back at the Village Inn. Um, in our bulletin are our Christmas weekend, long weekend services. There will be a service Christmas Eve, 9.30 with the carols, 10 o'clock with a high mass. We will be meeting at some time Christmas Eve to put out the luminaria candles and get them lit. And stay tuned for the times for those, because what's happening in my mind is one plan, but I know for the people who are going to be doing it, my plan might not necessarily be the best plan. So uh, stay tuned, be on the lookout for how we are going to get that done, but we have uh, my thanks to the team that came out to put all the bags together and all the, uh, get them ready to be put out. So all we have to do is drop them and light them. I think it's going to be absolutely fabulous. Um, next couple of Thursday Bible studies, of course, have been postponed for the same reason, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve. We will be having Sunday Bible, uh, Bible study. Um, this Sunday and continuing, and we're working in through the New Testament. So uh, if you want to join, uh, please let me know if you're not already getting the invites to the Zoom meeting. Birthdays and anniversaries. Somebody had a birthday. A lot of people have a birthday. Can't ring it off mail. If you have a birthday, happy birthday to you. If you're having an anniversary, happy anniversary to you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who are celebrating their first or last or next birthday. We thank you, Lord, that you have given them to us. We would ask that you put a head of protection around them, guide them so they can't turn to the right or to the left. Keep them always following where you lead. And for those who are celebrating anniversaries, Lord, God, bind them together closer, one to another that they may be living examples of a life dedicated to you. All this we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We will be streaming our Christmas Eve services and our Christmas Day services, so if you can't make it, please tune in uh, on your regular review channels. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you. 
take me for too many miles, too many stores. December traffic, Christmas rush. It brings me to the light, push and shove. Children are crying while mothers are trying to photograph Santa and Slay. Shopping and buying and standing forever in line. What can I say? I need a silent night, a holy night, to hear an angel voice in the chaos and the noise. I need a midnight here, a little peace right here, to end this crazy day with a silent mind. December comes, then disappears, faster and faster every year. Did my old mother keep this pace? Or was the world a different place? Or people stayed home, wishing for snow, watching preachers on their TVs. Look at us now, rushing around, trying to buy Christmas peace. I need a silent night, a holy night, to hear an angel voice. The chaos and the noise. I need a midnight clear, a little peace right here to end this crazy day with a silent night. What was it like that you left there? Peace on earth, goodwill towards men. I need a silent night, a holy night, to hear an angel voice through the chaos and the noise. I need a midnight wind, a little peace right here, to end this crazy day with a silent This crazy day with a sign. As you are able, please stand. Praise God, my Lord, all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures. Our service continues on page 333 in the Book of Common Prayer, page 333. The Lord be with you. We like Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is, it, is and right it is very neat, right in our bounden duty, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, because thou didst send thy beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death, and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. O 
All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou in thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sin. Do this as often as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. By dear and beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and in thy almighty goodness, thou say to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and water, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. We earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all of the benefits of his passion. And here we often present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable holy and living sacrifice unto thee, only beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are worthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but hardening our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Heavenly Father, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And it is not to temptation, but to the rest of you. The land is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. On page 337. 
together. We do not presume to come up to this side of the table for the mercy of the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in our manifold great graces. We are not worthy so much as to gather our crumbs under thy table, but thou art our mercy, O Lord, who taught our people always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, O gracious Lord, so deep and flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ. And to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him, and that he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them remembering that Jesus Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The table of our Lord Jesus Christ has been set, he is our host, we are his guests. For any who are hungry, for all who are thirsty, please come to this table of grace. The table is open all week. As you are able, when you are able, please come. Body of Christ, the bread of life. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Now, in peace of the Lord, who passes understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of the Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks to God. Amen. 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 Amen.